VOA Weather Hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. On today's program, you will hear stories from Jill Robbins and Gregory Stockel. Later, Brian Lynn presents this week's technology report. Finally, we visit a quiet and lake-filled national park in the northern state of Minnesota. But first... Shares of Vietnam's electric car company VinFast started publicly trading on the NASDAQ stock exchange on Tuesday. By the end of the first trading day, investors had pushed the market value of stock in the new company to $85 billion. That is more than the market value of Germany's Volkswagen at $69.7 billion, America's Ford at $48 billion, and several other established automakers. Share prices of VinFast increased about 270%, from around $10 to $37 on Tuesday. On Wednesday morning, the share price had dropped under $30. However, only a very small percentage of shares are being traded because VinFast founder Pham Nhat Vun currently owns 99% of the company. Now comes the hard part. VinFast, an electric vehicle or EV maker, will have to sell a lot more cars to meet the yearly target of 50,000 set by its founder. For that, the company will need to bring in partners rather than selling directly on its own. It will also need to bring prices down to compete with other EV makers that have been lowering their prices since the start of the year. VinFast chief executive Lei T. Tu Tui said on Tuesday, the EV maker would be moving to a new hybrid model for sales, bringing in distributors and dealers for overseas markets. Opening our own stores is great, but it takes a lot of time, she said. Joining forces with other partners to go faster has always been our nature. As of June, VinFast said, it has opened 122 showrooms worldwide, mostly on the west coast of the United States. Founder Vun had said in May that VinFast could sell 50,000 EVs this year. The company has sold over 16,000 vehicles, including its sales in Vietnam, through the first seven months. Even with that target, VinFast will only be selling about one-sixth of what it can produce at its Haiphong Vietnam factory. A new factory is being built in the American state of North Carolina. The plant is expected to begin operations in 2025. The Vietnam-based company has sold just 137 VF8 models in the U.S., to increase sales, VinFast will have to overcome poor reviews from U.S. automotive publications. Road and Track called the vehicle unacceptable, and Motor Trend said, Return to Sender. Business advisor Alex Partners has estimated that EV car makers need yearly sales of 400,000 vehicles to cover their costs. In China, most EV makers are losing money in a price competition aimed at increasing market share. In the U.S., EV makers, including Tesla and Ford, have recently lowered their prices in addition to federal government tax credits meant to get people to buy the vehicles. For comparison, 
the Tesla Model Y is almost $7,000 less than VinFast's VF8, with federal tax credits included. T said VinFast believed its products were priced competitively, but was working to bring prices down. There is no other automaker in the world that has as low a cost base as in Vietnam, she said. All of that is leading to cost reduction in the future. I'm Jill Robbins. The U.S. Weather Agency is exploring the ocean around the Aleutian Islands, aiming to map the sea floor and make discoveries about undersea life. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, research ship called Okeanos Explorer is on a five-month mission. It is a former U.S. Navy ship, which has been changed to meet current needs. Civilians and members of the NOAA Corps are carrying out the mission. The ship has a 48-member crew. It has technology and tools to gather information about the deep ocean and to immediately share it with researchers. The hope is that the data will be used for future research. Mission leader Shannon Hoy said that the seafloor near Alaska is full of life. She added, You would never know that unless we were able to go down there and explore. Researchers are using several kinds of sonar technology used to map objects underwater and two remotely operated vehicles, Deep Discoverer and Sirius. They are designed to map and collect samples. The researchers are exploring the Aleutian Trench and Gulf of Alaska areas of water near the U.S. state of Alaska. The researchers are also using cameras that can operate at depths of up to 6,000 meters. The cameras permit the researchers to document and immediately share their findings. The ship can also share live video of the dives with the public. Hoy said that in two to four weeks, the Okeanos Explorer can map as much as 50,000 square kilometers of ocean floor. Hoy said the team plans to investigate some of the area's cold seep communities. These are places where gas from under the sea floor rises through openings. Life in these places is not believed to depend on the sun for food production. Hoy said the researchers are also going to study the water column to see what interesting animals they can find there. Casey Cantwell is the ship's operations chief. She said the data will help researchers and the public better understand these areas of the ocean. The information could also help make decisions about fisheries and could also identify dangers at sea and improve maps. It's really hard to care for things you don't understand, to love things you don't understand, Cantwell said. 
The deep ocean off Alaska's Aleutian Islands is one of the least mapped places in the U.S. Modern mapping has covered just 34% of the seafloor off Alaska. The area includes one of America's largest coastal ecosystems, and only a small part of that has been seen, the mission's website says. Emily Crum is a communications specialist with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. She said filling holes in current information is a mission goal. The effort will also help meet a goal of mapping all of the United States' deep waters by 2030 and near shore waters by 2040. I'm Gregory Stockel. Many young Chinese are increasingly turning to online streaming as a way to earn money while selling products for major companies. The job involves live streaming on popular social media services in China. A person leading such live streams is known as a host. The goal is to persuade users to spend money with large brands such as Under Armour, Lancome, YSL Beauty, and Hugo Boss. One such streamer is 28-year-old Zhang Jinyu, a former model who studied fashion in college. She told reporters from Reuters news agency she has already completed hundreds of hours of live streams to publicize products for YSL Beauty and other brands. Zhang's live streams can involve her continuously speaking on camera for up to six hours. In addition, the preparation process requires her to do her hair and makeup and spend time recording sales results after her online broadcasts have ended. Reuters reports that Zhang is one of millions of young Chinese currently facing record youth unemployment of more than 21%. Live streaming sales is one way social media users can earn money without having to get a full-time job. For live streaming, the threshold to enter the industry is very low, Zhang said. I can pick up my phone and I'm live streaming. She noted, however, that live stream selling is now very competitive, making it difficult for newcomers to gain a following. If you can persevere, you can get better and better, Zhang said. Zhang is not alone in her desire to make live stream hosting a career. A recent public opinion study asked more than 10,000 young people on China's social media service Sina Weibo how they feel about the issue. More than 60% said they would be interested in working as an Internet influencer or live-streaming host. A study by Chinese-based marketing agency iResearch found the live-streaming industry employed more than 1.2 million hosts as of 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic helped lead live-streaming sales growth that brought in about $480 billion in China last year. 
That growth led to a series of agencies being created that aim to train new hosts and connect them with established brands. Zhang, for example, works with Shanghai-based agency Romomo. The company is a business partner of Buy Quickly, which helps hosts link up with major fashion-centered brands. Shining Li is vice president of Romomo. She told Reuters she thinks live streaming is currently one of the most important methods of communication for the international brands she works with. Shi Jiang is a 28-year-old live streaming host. She says her broadcasts are a good way for her to build lasting relationships with followers and increase sales for the brands she represents. We're like friends with the consumers, Sure said. She added, "If you can communicate with some personal affinity, that builds a kind of trust, and that relationship makes the consumer." Want to carry out the sale? I'm Brian Lynn. Now Brian Lynn joins me to talk more about this week's technology report. Hi, Brian. Thanks for being here. Of course, Ashley. Thanks for having me. Your report was about a growing number of Chinese youth who are going online to do live streaming sales to earn money, and I think there were some good vocabulary words to find in there that we can introduce our listeners to, right? Yes, that sounds like a good idea.、Um, let's start with the word streaming. This is a term used quite a bit these days because of the wide use of online streaming to deliver a variety of content to users. A basic definition of the word is the playing of a presentation, show, or movie over the internet. And of course, there are a number of different streaming services offering such content, including Netflix, Disney Plus, and Apple TV. And stream. When used as a noun, means something completely different. It describes a small river. Yes, that is correct, and it is interesting to note that a water stream involves a continuous flow of water. Of course, this is just like an online stream of video that continually plays over the internet. How about the word persevere, which is used as a verb? Yes, that is also a good one, and likely is a word many of our users have not come across before. So this term means to continue to do something even though it can be very difficult. If a person perseveres, he or she continually keeps doing something even in the face of serious issues. And persevere is usually linked to a process or activity that continues. Over a longer period of time. Okay. Thanks again, Brian, for being here and for sharing more information about your report. Sure, Ashley. Thank you. VOA Learning English has launched a new program for children. It is called Let's Learn English with Anna. The new course aims to teach children American English through asking and answering questions. And experiencing fun situations. For more information, visit our website, learningenglish.voanews.com. The state of Minnesota is known as the land of ten thousand lakes. Our national park today protects four major ones. The National Park Service says water is the foundation of this wild and remote place. Welcome to Voyagers National Park. 
You must have a strong desire to see voyagers to make the visit. It is not an easy place to get to. Much of the park is accessible only by boat. The voyagers for whom the park was named understood this well. Voyager is a French word meaning traveler. In the 1700s, French Canadian fur traders started coming to the area seeking beaver fur and other animal coats. The product was in great demand. In Europe, the fur traders traveled to and from the area for business. They took canoes to get around. The boat trips were often long and hard. The waters and wild animals created great dangers. Voyager life became legendary. The men. Were seen as brave adventurers, but they were also romantics. They became known for singing songs as they navigated the waterways. Of course, the voyagers were not the first people in the area that is now Voyagers National Park. People first arrived there about ten thousand years ago. They were mostly nomadic and did not settle permanently. In the last one thousand years, Native American tribes settled in the area, including the Cree, Monsoni, and Assiniboine. The Ojibwa were the residents of more modern times. They served as guides to the fur traders. They also provided canoes and other important items. Voyagers National Park covers almost eighty-eight thousand five hundred hectares. About half of that surface is water. Creating the park was a long and difficult process. Minnesotan state lawmakers. First proposed the idea in 1891, but it was 80 years before Congress established the park. President Richard Nixon signed the bill that finally established Voyagers as a national park in 1971. The park protects four major. Minnesotan lakes: Rainy Lake, Cabotogama, Namakin, and Sand Point. Rainy is the biggest. It covers about nine hundred thirty square kilometers. It is a popular fishing lake. Fishers may catch walleye, northern pike. And smallmouth bass. In the winter, thick ice covers Rainy Lake. Visitors can walk and drive on it. Rainy Lake meets with Namakin and Cabotogama Lakes at Kettle Falls. A dam was built on the falls in the early twentieth century. Along with it came the Kettle Falls Hotel. It housed traders, loggers, and visitors searching for gold in the area. The hotel fell into disuse in more modern times, but in 1987, the National Park Service made repairs and improvements to the building. It is the only indoor place to stay in the area. Nature and art meet at the Ellsworth Rock Gardens in Voyagers National Park. Park officials describe the gardens as 
the show place of Lake Cabotogama. A carpenter and artist from Chicago named Jack Ellsworth built a summer home on the lake in the 1940s. He then designed, built, and cared for the rock gardens over 20 years. The artist also created garden sculptures from native stone. There were once about 200 rock sculptures. Ellsworth stopped caring for the gardens in his older age. When the National Park Service took control of the land, the gardens needed repair and restoration. Today, it is an interesting place to visit within the park. Voyagers National Park may be best seen at night. Officials there like to say that half of the park comes out after dark. Certainly, much of its magic does. The most spectacular light display on Earth is sometimes visible at Voyagers. The Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights, appear periodically in the night sky as streaks or clouds of light. The lights are most often white or soft green. However, they sometimes deepen into colors like yellow, red, blue, and even purple. The northern lights are not always immediately recognizable, but keep watching. If the light you see comes and goes, or intensifies over time, you may be witnessing the aurora borealis. Along with the northern lights, Voyagers is a great place to see meteors. These bursts of light cross the area's black skies mostly in August, during the Perseids meteor shower. Meteors, often called shooting stars, form when pieces of ice and dust cross into Earth's atmosphere and begin to burn brightly. The display of natural fireworks is a great way to finish the day at Voyagers National Park. You can fall asleep under the stars and be sure that more extraordinary nature awaits you when day breaks in Voyagers National Park. I'm Katie Weaver. And I'm Ashley Thompson. And that's our program for today. Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. 